So let me ask you a question. Would you rather have $500,000 today or would you rather have a penny that doubles every day for 30 days? Which would you rather have? In the comment section below, type in your answer. Type in future millionaire and then 500 grand. Or if your answer is future millionaire, type in a penny. Which would you rather have? I'll give you the answer to this question in this next episode of how to think like a millionaire in this episode of the 7 Fears Squad happening in 3, 2, 1. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zipal here, hailing to you from the Seven Figure Squad studio here in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. And I'm glad that you are joining us again on this episode of how to think like a millionaire. Because before you become a millionaire, you gotta start thinking like a millionaire. So before I give you the answer to this question, let me share with you this children's tale. And I'm gonna pretend like I'm talking to you like I'm talking to my kids, right? And uh, it's a story about the tortoise and the hare. It's about the story about the tortoise and the hare. Have you heard of it? All right, so the story goes like this. One day, a tortoise and the hare, okay? They get together and have a conversation. One says, I'm gonna beat you in a race. The other one says, I'm gonna beat you in a race. <laughs> yeah, right. The hare is like, man, I'm faster than you. You're a, you're a tortoise, you're slow. But the tortoise says, I'm consistent. Well, the hare says, I'm fast. All right, let's line up. One day, they get together, put the toes on the line, and boom, take off. marks, it said. Take off, they say, you know, hair takes off, boom, boom, look over your shoulder, they see it dusts them, right? Dusts them. The point, they can't even see the tortoise anymore. The tortoise, just boom, boom, he's, he's coming along, he's coming along, coming along. Anyway, the hair says, you know what? I got this guy, man. There ain't no way this tortoise is gonna beat me. Decides to go up, take, take a nap. Goes off in the cabbage patch, hangs out, falls asleep, kind of wakes up in the middle of his nap, sees the tortoise still far away behind. And he's slowly crawling, slowly edging, slowly going forward. And Torres says, man, I got this guy. Let me eat some cabbages. Let me get some carrots. Let me get fat and happy. Let me chill. Let me go back to, back to my nap. Next thing you know, the hare wakes up, and the tortoise is two feet away from crossing the finish line. And the hare's like freaking out. He's like, dang, I missed out. I fell asleep on this guy for too long. Next thing you know, he sprints, 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 and could not catch up to the tortoise as the tortoise crossed the line. Now you be asking yourself, well Matt, what's the point of the story? What's the point of the story that I gotta figure this stuff out to become a millionaire? What's the point of the story between a hare and a tortoise? Well, like we talk about episode after episode, week after week, is that before you become a millionaire, you also gotta strategize like a millionaire, and before you strategize like a millionaire, you gotta think like a millionaire. So that's this point. The point is this, oftentimes people say, you know what, I'm making money here. I got this cash right now. I got this 500 grand right now, right? And they think, I'm good. I got my check, I'm good. I got my bonus, I'm good. I got my COVID check, I'm good. I got my unemployment check, I'm good. And with your 500K, you say, I'm good. I'm gonna rest in a cabbage patch of 500K. But if you did the math, a penny that doubles every day for 30 days turns into five million dollars. So what would you rather have? A penny that doubles every day for 30 days becomes five million dollars? Or would you have 10% of that, which is only 500K because you were hanging out in the couch pass, taking a nap, not doing anything with the 500K here because you got off to a faster start, but you didn't think about the math later on. You didn't think about the second move, the third move, the fourth move. In this case, a fourth, fifth, tenth, a hundredth move. You just thought about the initial 500K. Now, how does this apply to you? What does this matter to you aspiring to be a first generation cash flow millionaire of your family? Well, think of this penny as your daily habits. Think of this penny as your daily moves, your consistent thinking, your consistent efforts. Think about every day you take action and you put into effort and the results eventually start compounding and you're not getting this whole get rich quick syndrome. See this get rich quick syndrome of getting money right now, right away, fast, quick, leaves you susceptible and open to a lot of mistakes. Let me give you a personal example. I remember getting into the insurance industry right as soon as I got the Marine Corps. It was my seventh year in, I transitioned out, I got into the insurance industry. I remember coming out the base and I had a choice between picking the mortgages or picking the insurance. 
I've said this in multiple videos in the past. And I said, you know what, let me pick insurance because at least this time, uh, uh, I need money right now. At this particular time of my life, I need money right away. I can't wait 30, 60, 90 days for a property to refinance in the bank to fund it for me to finally get a commission check. Now, with that being said, a lot of people in the mortgage business made a lot of money. A lot of people in the real estate business made a lot of money. They made a lot of money, quick, profit, boom, boom, boom. Matt, what's up? We're living a high life. We're taking off, we're partying, we'll meet you at the clubs. I said, bro, you ain't gonna meet me at the clubs, man, I'm still grinding. Dude, why are you doing insurance? Why are you doing retirement planning? You should come with us here in real estate and all, this, all these different uh, real estate trends and mortgage buddies that we're hanging out with, all right? So cool, by the way, that's you, that's not me. Um, I, I, I wanna get grounded here on making sure my efforts find, find a way to compound because here's what I know about the insurance industry. This book of business here starts to compound after a while, whereas the real estate mortgages don't. Anyway, fast forward. 21 years now I've been to this industry. 21 years I've been inside one industry. I haven't been jumping, jumping, jumping from one career, one business card to one business card, one email address, another email address. No, 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 I've been in one industry for 21 years. And sadly, the people that told me that, they're jumping from real estate to mortgages, and now I heard Bitcoin, and now Forex, that's not a knock on anybody that's doing that, but I want it for me, I want a consistent, predictable income. I want to make sure next year I make a million, the next year I make a million, and the year after that I make a million. I wasn't so sure about that with inside, with inside real estate and mortgage. And what has happened the last 21 years? I, we're now in my third recession. I've been through the 01.com bubble, I've been through the 08, 09 Great Recession, and now we're in the midst of the pandemic. And what has proven itself to be strong and dependable and resourceful and shows its strength in the midst of crisis? My field, the insurance industry. You know, right or wrong, I picked an industry. You, you, you need to make sure you find yourself in the industry and say, you know what? I need to find something that's going to last through time. So as a wrap up, let me leave you with three points. Number one, success loves speed. However, it is also susceptible. Now, any decision you make, I hope that you make it with urgency, that you go all in on it, and you work with speed. Yes, but don't let that be the end all be all. Success loves speed, yet it is also susceptible to laziness. Because I remember our guys, you know, uh, they were saying, you know, Matt, you know, I uh, can't wait to make 100000 Our guys make $100,000. Then they kick back, relax. I said, bro, what's up, man? What's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the next version? You're like, that, you're like that hair in the cabbage patch right now. You chilling? Next thing you know, the business started dwindling because they took 30 days off, 60 days off, over-celebrating. They made $200,000, they over celebrating 30, 60 days. They took extended long vacations, longer than they need to, thinking that this is gonna be automatic. No, bro, if you're not constantly innovating and constantly improving, guess what happens? The tortoise will win the race. Which leads me to my second point. Consistency is king. If you don't allow your efforts to compound. For example, our guys, we, t we teach them, we coach them, hey, make, make phone calls every day, make follow-ups every day create relationships and connections every day, build a market every day. If they don't do that every day, guess what happens? Nothing happens in their business and they wonder, how come I'm not a first generation millionaire yet? How come I'm not a cash flow millionaire yet? You told me as long as I do this, no, no, no. Just because you spend 30 days doing this, but were you consistent every day for 30 days? You see my example earlier, that penny doubled every day for 30 days to become $5 million. You just can't say, I'm gonna double for two days, take off three. I'm gonna get back in and try to double again for two days, take off four. I'm gonna to try to double again for two more days and take off five. No, it doesn't work that way. Consistency is king. And my third point, complacency kills. You see, the hair got comfortable. He stopped at the cabbage patch. He took a nap. I remember qualifying for one of my first trips as a, as a, as a young entrepreneur and you know, the insurance industry, they fly all over the world. And I remember getting flown out to Hawaii. And uh, I, was, I think I was making maybe $80,000, $90,000 a year at the time. I was just coming up in the business, and I was enamored by a guy that's making $750,000 a year. He's making three quarters of a million dollars a year, right? And to me, that's a lot of money at that time. And uh, I said, man, I said, dude, dude, tell me the dream right quick. He says, well, what, what do you want me to tell you? I said, tell me what it's like. Tell me what it's like to be making $750,000 a year and having a mansion and all these diff different things in your life have happened. What's it like making $750,000 a year? You know what he says about the hardest thing about making $750,000 a year is? I said, yeah, I'm all ears. He says, the hardest thing is this, having to get up in the morning because I don't have to. <laughs> I said, like, dude, that's awesome. Like, I, was, I was like excited for him and then the competitor in me kicked in. I said, dude, keep thinking that way. Keep thinking that way. You know why? Because I can catch you. Because you're gonna get caught. You're sleeping in a cabbage patch, hanging out, chilling, taking a nap on me. I'm gonna run circles around you. And guess what? I have.
many times. Ran laps around him. And he's still figuring out, he, uh, he's still figuring out what he wants to do because he definitely ain't crossing one and a half million, two million dollars a year because he's stuck still in a cabbage patch instead of compounding efforts. It's kind of like complacency saying, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And here's the thing about being a first generation cash flow millionaire. I hope that you'd want to pass on to your kids so therefore they can become second generation millionaires. You pass on the values, you pass on the principles, you pass on the strategies, you pass on the business, you pass on wealth, you pass on assets, not just financial assets, but intellectual and human assets that you pass on to them because in one of those assets should be never let yourself to be complacent. So with that being said, I want to reference a couple of videos for you to consider watching. Number one is go opposite. Uh, this is a video that uh, when I decided to become a cash flow first generation millionaire, a lot of people didn't uh, agree with me. A lot of people, my friends and family said, what, get a job, just chill, just be good, be complacent, be happy with your nine to five. I said, man, I'm going opposite, man. I got some big dreams. I want you to watch this video called Go Opposite. The second video I want you to watch is this video that I had with my mentor of mine, Patrick Bedave, who now today is a Wall Street Journal best-selling author, number one book on the Wall Street Journal, Your Next Five Moves. And we had a conversation. We we're flying across the country in a private jet, and we shot a video on the five misconceptions, five biggest misconceptions of becoming a millionaire. So with that being said, guys, drop your thoughts below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're strategizing on. Let me know how you're getting results from some of these videos that you've been watching. So therefore, you can start thinking like a millionaire. You can start strategizing like a millionaire. So therefore, one day soon, you can become a first-generation cash flow millionaire. Drop your comments below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, I'm your money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.